we sing that third verse one more time, I want us just to truly get into his presence today. Father, we welcome you in this place this morning. We bless your holy name. Sing it, Jack. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder. the praises of your people today. Come, Lord Jesus, and just sit down on our praises this morning in this house. Lord, I just pray today that you would just move in this place in such a powerful way. That God, wherever people are watching online this morning, that Father, you'll just engulf and consume today the atmosphere wherever they're watching from. Father, I pray you'll bring about change this morning in our life. And Lord, you'll bring about a, a healing and restoration today in our lives. Lord, we give you right away. We give you permission. Do whatever you want to do, Lord, in our lives today. Lord, we've come in here with all kinds of needs represented. All kinds of needs this morning are online. But Father, we're thankful today that we serve the great I am. The God who gives us identity. The God who gives us salvation. The God who heals us and restores us. We bless you today that you're that God and we serve you today. Have your way, Lord, this morning, I pray. We praise you, we exalt you, we extol you today for you are great and greatly to be praised. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say amen. 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 Turn to the person next to you and just say, ah, oh, get ready. You've come on a good day. Praise the Lord. As our ushers get ready to receive our tithe and offering, I was reminded of a story that I heard years ago concerning tithe. A minister was telling a story on himself. He said he was raised not knowing anything about church. And so when he got saved, that means he become born again, he was attending the church that believed and preached and taught and did tithing. And he said, okay, and he started learning that give one-tenth of what you have to the Lord and the Lord will give back. So he started his tithing. And at the time, he was making $10 a week. And so one-tenth of $10 is a dollar. So he gladly give that one dollar and soon after that god began to bless him and he got a raise and he went up to twenty dollars a week now he's making twenty dollars he gives a tenth of that and he goes up to two dollars a week he moved all the way up to 100 i mean god was just blessing this young man he got a a, a job making 100 dollars a, a, a week and he gave ten dollars so he said well god you've been so good to me you've been so good to me and the Lord blessed him with another raise, and he went up to $200 a week. And he said, $200, that's the most money I've ever seen, most money I've ever gotten for anything. And he said, Lord, well, I guess if the dollar was good enough back then, it's good enough now. And so he cut back and went back to giving a dollar a week, and he lost everything. Are you trying to scare us into paying tithe? No, I may be trying to wake somebody up, but I know that with doing what God's word says, there comes blessing. And when you don't obey God's word, comes. Non-blessing. 
So this morning I challenge you. You say, well, why do we have to give? The church surely has plenty of money. Wrong answer. And I'm going to tell you why we must give. We don't give to get. We give because it's the Word of God. And we are blessed because of obedience to the Word of God. And I can tell you right now, we need to give more than we need to receive. Oh, you don't know my finances. Start giving unto, unto the Lord as he has said in his word and watch and see if he will not pour out a blessing that you will be unable to contain. Oh, you mean I'm going to become a millionaire? Probably not because you and I both know that we probably couldn't handle being a millionaire. I, I'm just telling you, I, I thought some time ago, I'd love to be a millionaire. And the Lord reminded me, if you became a millionaire, you'd probably backslide because the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, if you're a millionaire sitting here, God bless you. Give a tenth. And let God really bless you. Now, I said all that to just ask you to listen to the Lord and his word. And if you are paying your tithe today, God bless you. And if you're listening for the Lord to say, this is the offering I want you to give. I said paying tithe, giving offering. If this is the offering I'm supposed to give, speak to my heart and then obey God and watch what God will do. Amen. Yeah, you're standing up there and you're looking good. No, I'm not. <laughs> I wanted to help my own ego. <laughs> and you're standing up there and look at that fine suit, several years old. I, I want to tell you, those of you that don't know, I'm on Social Security. There's nothing social or secure about it. <laughs> okay? There's nothing social or secure. And those of you on Social Security know what I'm talking about. But I believe in giving tithe. And one thing I used to love in making, getting raises, pastor, was I could increase my tithe. I would have the ability. It would be there. And I could increase. In fact, we, I don't know that we pay a tenth since we've been married. We felt like we were supposed to pay more than a tenth. You know why? Because we want to be blessed of the Lord. Amen. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus right now. I ask you, Lord, to speak to each and every one of our hearts, Lord. Help us to realize that, Lord, paying our tithe is scriptural. It's biblical. It's in the Bible, Lord. And as we pay our tithe, Lord, I ask you to show yourself so real. So Show yourself so real. Maybe there's a first-time first tither. Show yourself so real to them, Lord, that their needs would be met, not just financial needs, but emotional, spiritual, physical, whatever, that you will bless abundantly and above what they can imagine or even think. And, Lord, if they're giving an offering because you begin to speak to them, don't let the devil, please, Lord, block the devil out of their thinking when he says, well, you can't afford to give that. You can't. Lord, I know from personal experience we can't afford not to give. We must obey you. We must be in obedience. So today, bless in the giver, gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, we serve a good God, don't we? What a... Uh... What a, what a good God he is, and I, I hope and pray y'all had a great uh, Christmas, and uh, I am, I'm just happy, I'm always happy to be with my family, um, but it seems like the Christmas day has, draws into a Christmas several days, and uh, I'm, I'm always glad to get back home, and we got back home last evening, and, and uh, it was just good to sit down and go, after all the hustle and bustle of being at Jenny's family and my family and, and different things that we had to do. And uh, so it, it was just good. So I, I hope you had a blessed, blessed Christmas time. I want to make just a couple announcements before I get into uh, uh, the sermon today. Um, those of you that may be interested in our school of ministry, uh, the school of ministry will be starting back up. They've been on uh, Christmas break during the month of December, but it starts back up on January 7th, and um, we are excited about that, and uh, if, if you have not gone through our school of ministry, several have, and, and many just finished the first year of our school, and our second year will be starting up January 7th. If you're interested in our school of ministry, there are brochures at the information desk 
in the foyer so you can stop by there after church and uh, and pick up one of those brochures and it'll give you all the information and um, and where to sign up and and who to get a hold of uh, uh, brother Rick Gerlock is is back here and he's the director Rick stand up so everybody can just see you he's the director of our school of ministry and so if you have any questions for Rick uh, you see him after the service and uh, uh, Rick will help get you plugged into the school of ministry then I, I also wanted to mention as you came in this morning I don't know if you noticed it or not and if you didn't look up then you probably didn't but over the bookstore area uh, you saw uh, the words why it matters in 2020 why it matters and uh, one of the things that God has put on our hearts is that there is going to be an increase of souls in this house and um, so why it matters is what it's all about we are here to see lives changed we're here to see the glory of God move on people's lives and so the why it matters wall out there is in 2020 every soul that comes to Jesus Christ uh, we're going to put a line up there on that wall and we're going to celebrate as that wall begins to grow with marks of souls that have been saved throughout the year in 2020. God promised he's going to bring an increase of souls. He promised he's going to bring an increase in unity. He's going to bring an increase of miracles. And we've already started seeing these things. He's going to bring an increase of holy living. And he's going to bring an increase of financial blessing. It's coming. And uh, I just bless the Lord today for his faithfulness and for the promise of God. And along with the why it matters, one of the, one of the things that I, I believe God strongly wanted us to do is put into place a, a new believer's teaching and class. And that class is going to be called I Am a Life Changed. And uh, that new believer's class uh, Jeff, Jeff, is Jeff here? Jeff's right here. Jeff, stand up. Jeff's been working on our new believers material and curriculum. And if you have recently been saved, we want you to get plugged into the class that Jeff's going to be teaching. Uh, already on our website, there is a, uh, there is under events, there's a uh, graphic there that says, I am a life change, correct? And uh, so you can go to our website, lccmilford.com, go under events, and you'll see I Am Alive Changed. And if you are a new believer, if you've been recently saved, get plugged up into that class that Jeff is going to be teaching starting January 8th. It's a Wednesday night. It'll happen during the Wednesday night service in, in the uh, visitor reception room down here on Wednesday nights. Uh, so, so please get plugged into that, get signed up for that class. If you're a new Christian, maybe you've been saved for a little while, but you just have never got rooted and grounded in the Word of God. It's important that you get plugged into that. We want to equip the saints for the work of ministry. That's what God has called us to do as a body. And so uh, we want you to get plugged in with Jeff uh, in that class. It's going to be a four-week class, and so it's going to be going new every month. So every month we're believing as God saves people and, and, and God moves in their heart and they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, every month new people are going to be coming into that class uh, throughout 2020. So I'm excited about that. I, I just believe that God is going to bless that, put his stamp of approval on that, and we're going to see some real change take place here at Life Change Church. Amen? Amen. 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 There's a lot of other new things that are going to be starting after the first of the year as well that I'm excited about that I'm not going to get into today. I just wanted to uh, bring those few things uh, to you this morning. So get plugged up in that. If you have your Bible today, which I hope you do, and for those of you that don't, they'll put the, screen, the words on the screen. But uh, turn with me to Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41, and stand with me while you're looking for that in your Bible. Genesis chapter 41. While everybody's looking for that, let me just welcome all the new people that are here today. Thank you for joining us today. We're, we're so excited that you're here and uh, you're a part of this service. And we pray you'll be blessed and that you'll come back and uh, be with us throughout the year 2020. Thank you for those of you that are joining us online as well. We welcome you to Life Change Church 
as well. In, in Genesis chapter 41, I want to start reading with verse 39. And we're reading about Joseph. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. Now this is Pharaoh talking to Joseph. Joseph has just interpreted uh, the dreams of Pharaoh. And so God has positioned Joseph in, in a great place here. And he says, Pharaoh says, There is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried out before him, Bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh with and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Father, I pray that you will bless the reading of your word today. May this today, Lord, not fall on deaf ears. But God, may this word today be life-changing. May it today, Lord, change our lives forever. We thank you, Lord, that there's power in the Word of God. And Lord, today may it not fall on, on hard soil. But Father, I pray today that you will rough up the soil of our lives and help the seed that is about ready to be planted fall on good soil. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Anyone reading the story of Joseph must come to the same conclusion. Joseph was anointed. Joseph was favored by God. Joseph was definitely favored by his earthly father, Jacob. Joseph had a God-given destiny and dream over his life. But the truth of the matter is this morning this. This same Joseph, who was so anointed and had so much destiny in favor of God on his life, also had some bad chapters in his life as well. See, a, a chapter is any distinct period in history or in a person's life. A series of related events forming an episode. It's a sequence of events, especially when, when presumed related and likely to continue on. You see this morning, if you go back to Genesis chapter 37, you'll find Joseph as a teenager. He was 17 years old, the Bible says, and he was very, very loved by his father. In fact, more so loved than any of Jacob's other sons. He was loved so much that Jacob made him the coat of many colors and, and, and he placed it around Joseph and, 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 and his brothers, the Bible said, hated him because his dad loved him so much. The Bible then says that Joseph had his first dream. And in that dream, God showed him that his brothers would someday bow down to him. Well, Joseph, in his youthfulness, goes to his brothers and shares this dream. And as you can imagine, brothers that already hated the young man even now hated him more. 
You mean to tell me we're going to bow down to you, you little punk? I dare you to say that to us. And, and, and the Bible says that after that, that, that God gives Joseph another dream. And in that dream, all the, all the land was going to bow down and worship him. So in his youthfulness, once again, he goes to his brothers. And he says, listen, guys, not only did God show me that you're going to bow down to me, but also all the land is going to bow down to me. And they hated him even more. The Bible says that his brothers began to consult behind his back. And they began to come up with a plan. We got to get rid of this little punk. We got to get rid of this favorite one of dad's. And, and we've got to do something about him. Because he is out of control. And so the Bible says that they took him out. And they found a pit. And uh, they, they threw him into that pit. And left him there. Listen, Joseph was hated by his brothers, betrayed by his brothers, rejected by his brothers, stripped of his coat of many colors by his brother, and thrown into the pit and then sold into slavery by his brothers. Listen, that was just one chapter of Joseph's life. Another chapter found Joseph in, in, in the house there in, in Egypt. And he was serving one of the, the, the masters there in, in Egypt. Uh, one of the main guys there, Potiphar. And the Bible says that Potiphar's wife, the Bible says that, that, that Joseph was a handsome man. And Potiphar's wife took a liking to him. And began hitting on him and one day she she was in the house there and and Joseph came in he was serving his master and he came in and uh, uh, Potiphar's wife put the moves on him and uh, the Bible says that Joseph was such an honorable man that he wouldn't have anything to do with it to bring dishonor to his master that in his haste of running out of the room that he left his coat she ripped his coat off of him and 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 there it was and he took off and 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 her husband comes in and says look this this guy of yours that hebrew boy that you brought in here to serve you he tried to come in here and have his way with me and he tried to he tried to harm me and so of course the master gets mad that's his wife and and the bible says that joseph was thrown in to prison Another bad chapter in Joseph's life. How many would agree today that a couple of bad chapters in, in Joseph's life was a bad thing? It, it, was, it, was a, it, was, it was a hard thing. They were sad chapters. How many would also agree today that Joseph probably shed some tears in those chapters of his life? Joseph probably wondered, God... Why are you doing this to me? You know I did nothing to Potiphar's wife, and here I sit. Almost over two years he sat in prison because of what happened in that room that day. There he was in the pit all that time. You, 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 you know he was wondering, God, why are you doing this? God, why have you abandoned me? I've done everything right. I, 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 I'm trying to hear your voice. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm believing I'm hearing the dreams and seeing the dreams that you are giving me. Why are you doing this to me, God? And listen this morning. Some of you that I'm talking to right now, might feel just like Joseph. You've been lied on. You've been rejected. You've been stripped of your dignity. You've been betrayed. You've been hurt. You've been abused. You've been beat down. You've been beat up. You, you've been knocked down and thrown in the pit and left there to die. But listen to me today. 
I have a word from God for you this morning. You might disappoint some people after you leave this place today because you are not going to die in the pit. Hallelujah. As a church, we might disappoint some people today after this service because this church is not going to die in the pit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, this morning, I don't even really have a sermon, but what I have for you today is a prophetic word. God gave me two words this week for this church today, and those two words are these, new chapter. New chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, what looked like and felt like a sad ending to your story is just making room for a new chapter. <laughs> and I don't know who this is for today, but listen, you know who you are. Some chapters of a book may be long, and some chapters are short. Some chapters are happy chapters, and some chapters are sad. Some chapters might make you laugh, and some chapters make you cry. But whether it's a long chapter or a short chapter, or whether it's a happy one or a sad one, all chapters of a book have one thing in common. They end. They end. Your bad chapter is ending today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This past Thursday, as I sat in my office, I felt like God told me to come in here today and prophesy to you who have had a bad chapter in your life. And listen to me today. It's not over. The story of your life is bigger than one or two or three bad chapters. The story of Life Change Church is not over. Our God is bigger than one or two bad chapters. Hallelujah. 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 And hear me today, church. In this new chapter, the best is yet to come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Hear me this morning, church. Never judge a person by the bad chapter in their life. That last chapter may have been a long one. That last chapter may have been a sad one. But don't you dare try to finish my story based on one or two bad chapters. If you look at Joseph in the pit, or you look at Daniel in the lion's den, or Jonah in the belly of the whale, or the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, and you just left them there, that might have, you might have thought that their story was ending with a bad chapter. But listen, but that was just the bad chapter of their story. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad today that my story is bigger than one or two bad chapters. And I've come to remind someone today, Joseph was put into the pit, but he went from the pit to the palace. He was put in the pit, 
but he went from the pit to the palace. Daniel came out of the lion's den with all his fingers and toes and limbs intact. The three Hebrew boys came out of the fiery furnace and were promoted. Hallelujah. Jonah came out of the belly of the well. And the Bible says that he preached a revival that 120,000 people got saved. Your story does not end with the bad chapter. Don't judge somebody because of a bad chapter in their life. Listen, I came to prophesy to you today as a church and to somebody who has had a bad chapter in your life. You felt like Joseph and you felt like Daniel. You felt like Jonah. You felt the fire licking at your feet. You felt the hot breath of the lions on your neck. You felt like Jonah in the belly of the whale, like God was a million miles away. Maybe for you this morning, this bad chapter has been a really long chapter. Like the woman with the issue of blood who suffered for 12 long years. Or maybe it's been even an extended chapter. Like the man at the pool of Bethesda who suffered for 38 years long years listen i don't know how long your bad chapter has been but i do know this today god has said new chapter god said to tell you when you leave this place today you're walking out of the bad chapter into a new chapter this morning <laughs> ah, glory to God. Listen, do you understand that the devil wants to kill the dreamer inside of you? See, the devil knows if he can kill the dreamer in you, then the new chapter will never come. But listen, I've come on assignment this morning. I came to wake up the dreamer inside you. I came to speak the destiny God has put inside your life. I came to speak to the anointing inside your belly today. I came to stir up the embers that may have gone cold. I came to fan the flame of the Holy Ghost inside of you. Listen, church, I came this morning to rebuke hopelessness. I came this morning to rebuke discouragement. I came this morning to rebuke despair. I came to cast out fear. I came to cast out despair. Disappointment. I came to cast out disillusionment. Hallelujah. I believe even right now as I'm speaking, something in your belly is beginning to stir. Something in your spirit is waking up. God is maybe screaming to your inside saying, wake up, wake up, wake up today. God is saying, wake up. Glory to God. Like Joseph, you may have been stripped of your coat of many colors. You may have been stripped of your job. Maybe you've come in here today and you've gone through a very bad divorce. Maybe you've, you've lost your house. Maybe you've lost your health. Maybe you've lost your peace. Maybe you've lost your joy today. Maybe you have even lost your faith for a little while in this bad chapter. You've been places and you've done things that you knew were wrong and you have a lot of regrets and disappointments today. You may have let anger and resentment and hatred and unforgiveness Fill your heart. But listen to me today. That was the last chapter. That was the last chapter. Everybody say last chapter. 
that was the last chapter. See, somebody needs to get a hold of this this morning. When you look at me in my last chapter, I may have been broken. I was humiliated. I was miserable. When you look at me in my last chapter, I was lame. I was angry. I had been hurt. I was disappointed. I was lonely. I had been crying. But church, that was my last chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see a new chapter on the horizon. <laughs> Glory to God. I see a new chapter beginning to open in your life. I see God the Holy Ghost turning the page from the old to the new today. <laughs> Glory to God. And you know what? In that next chapter, you're looking awful good. <laughs> In that next chapter, you're looking good in that new and fresh anointing. In that next chapter, you're looking good in the, in the new joy that the Holy Spirit is bringing. In the next chapter, you look good in your new blessing. Oh, church, hear me today. Somebody today is coming out of depression. Somebody today, God is turning the page, and you're coming out of darkness today. Somebody today is coming out of disappointment. Somebody today, you've been angry, and it's affecting your relationships because you've been hurt, and you've been abused. You've been rejected. But God is saying to you today, I have come to heal you and restore you and take away that anger and resentment and unforgiveness from you. Listen, somebody's coming out of hopelessness today. Somebody is coming out of despair this day. Hallelujah. It was not Joseph's coat of many colors that brought him out of the pit. It wasn't even Joseph's dreams that brought him out of the pit. And, and I know this will surprise some of you, but it wasn't even Joseph's anointing that brought him out of the pit. You know what brought him out of the pit? Well, the Bible says that after they had thrown him in there, they had walked away. And his brother Judah looks at his brother's and says, guys, we can't do that. We can't leave him in that pit to die. You know what brought him out of the pit? It was Judah. Do you know what Judah means? Judah means praise. Church, listen to me today. Isaiah 61 and 3 says, Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, the oil of joy for morning glory to God. Psalms 34, 1, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah, praise his name. Oh, listen, Psalms 113 says, Praise the Lord. Praise, O oh, saints of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. Why? The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth? Listen, this is what our God does. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap. Glory to God. Somebody's getting raised out of the ash heap this morning that he may seat him with princes, glory to his name, with the princes of his people. Church, let me remind you today of Paul and Silas 
in the midnight hour. There they were. They had been beaten. They were bleeding. They were bruised. They had their hands all chained up and their feet chained, their feet chained up as well. They were thrown into the inner prison. Their hands were all bound up. The Bible says that Paul and Silas began to pray and they began to sing praises to God. And when they began to sing and pray and praise the Lord, God in heaven began to come on the scene. And the Bible says that he shook the foundation of that prison off its foundation and the prison doors off their hinges and not only were Paul and Silas set free but every prisoner was released mm. tell somebody today there's power in your praise there's power in your praise somebody needs to be reminded of that today God said to prophesy new chapter there's a new chapter unfolding today. This is a new season of restitution, a season of, of restoration. He said this is your season for a new and fresh anointing. And listen, this anointing is going to destroy the yokes in your life. But you know what's sad today? This new anointing, this new chapter is not coming on everyone. Well, you say, why not? Listen, it is not coming on the murmurers and the complainers. This new chapter is not coming on the moaners and the groaners. This new chapter is not coming on the critical and the judgmental. This new chapter is not coming on the religious and the self-righteous. It's not coming on the hypocritical today. It's not coming on the backbiters and those who spread venom and hatred among the saints. God says to you today, if you're in one of those categories, repent, repent today if you're in one of those. This is a new anointing. This is a new chapter. And it's coming on those who are hungering and thirsting for more of Him. It's coming on those who love God and hate sin. It's coming on those who are passionate about Jesus Christ. It's coming on those who have a praise on them and who will praise the Lord. Just like Judah brought Joseph up out of the pit. Praise is going to take you into your new chapter today. Praise is the introduction to your new chapter. God says to you today, if you'll praise me, we will start a new chapter of your life today. He said if you'll praise him like you're already in the new chapter, he will turn things around in your life. If you'll give him this morning a palace kind of praise while you're still in the pit, he will take you into the palace today. Listen, there is prophecy hidden in your praise. Your praise this morning is dressing you for what God is going to do in the next chapter. Hear me today. Your praise is dressing you for what, is, what God is going to do for you in the next chapter. Well, what do you mean? Well, you take Joseph. Do you know when Pharaoh called for Joseph to come and interpret his dreams? Joseph was still in the prison. But the Bible says that Joseph changed his clothes and he shaved himself and he got himself ready for the next level. He got himself ready for what was to come while he was still in the bad chapter. 
God, church, you got to get a hold of that. He was shaving and cleaning himself up in the bad chapter for what was about to take place in the new chapter. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, your praise is dressing you for your new chapter. Listen, you're in the dressing room this morning. And many of you need a new change of clothes. And it may not be this kind of clothes that I'm talking about today. I, I, listen, I, some of you, you got to get out of that heavy coat of heaviness. You've got to shed some of that depression off of you. That anxiety and that stress has got to go. I've got to strip off all this pride. I've got to strip off all this anger. I've got to strip off all this unforgiveness. It's time, church that we lay aside the weight and the sin that has so easily taken us off course time after time after time. I, I'm taking off the garment of heaviness today, the garment of discouragement today, the garment of hopelessness today. I'm putting on the garment of praise today. Your praise is dressing you for your next level. Your praise this morning is dressing you for the next level, the next chapter of your life. Listen, if you want to know what's about to take place in the next chapter, just look at my praise. That's a good telltale sign. If you want to know where I'm going next in my life, just listen to my praise coming out of my mouth. There is prophecy hidden in your praise. Let me ask you today, what is your praise prophesying in your life today? What is your praise saying to your situation in that bad chapter? See, somebody today... And I don't know who you are, but somebody needs to praise the Lord like you've never praised the Lord today. Somebody, you've been stuck in a bad chapter. And God says to you today, you need to start praising me right now while in the pit, while in this bad chapter. Praise me like you're in the new. Praise me with your mouth, he says. Somebody needs to praise the Lord today with your hands. You might need to raise your hands unto a holy God. You may need to clap your hands this morning. Somebody needs to praise. Praise the Lord on your feet. God wants to give you a dance back that the devil stole from you. Somebody, God is taking you today to a new chapter. A new, new day is dawning today. But listen, we have a part to play in this new chapter. When the Bible says to put on the garment of praise... You and I are responsible for putting that on. Amen. That just doesn't happen. It's a choice that every single person in this room and everybody watching online today has to make. Are you going to choose to put on the garment of praise or are you going to choose to continue to walk where you've been walking in this bad chapter? It's a choice. God says you put it on and I'll do everything I can do and I will bring you out of the bad into the new. But listen, church, it's up to you and I to put on that garment of praise today. So I ask you, who's going to put it on this morning? Listen, there's a miracle in your praise today. God is bringing about a new chapter in your life today. It's time for you to give God some real praise. Stop doing what you've always done and start doing something different today. 
Start thinking different today. Start acting different today. Don't just fall into the same old, same old habits, but get up and shake yourself off today and do something different. You will never get to the new chapter doing the same old, same old. It's time to shake yourself, church. It's time to allow the Holy Spirit to stir up within you and allow that to begin to spill outside of you. Listen, praise Him for where you see yourself in the new chapter. Praise Him for what you see God doing in your life in the new chapter. Listen, I know I'm not talking to everybody today, but somebody today is sick and tired of being sick and tired. Today is your day. This is a new season. This is a new time. I want everybody just to stand with me this morning. Listen, if you believe today that this word is for you, I want you to just begin to activate it today with a sign that God is turning the page in your life. I want you just to shout right now, new chapter, when I count to three. Today, it's a new dawning. Today is a new chapter in your life. Today, the bad chapter ends in this church. This begins a new chapter today. Today, the bad chapter ends. Today, the new chapter begins. Oh, hallelujah. New chapter. On the count of three, I want you to shout it. One, two, three. New chapter. Now praise the Lord today. today. God is turning the page. God is turning the page. There's a miracle in your praise today. There's deliverance in your praise today. There's healing in your praise today. God is taking your praise into your new chapter today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's closing the page on your own chapter. That bad chapter. That chapter may have ended in tears, but this new chapter begins with praise. This new chapter is going to be filled with joy. The joy of the Lord. God is returning and restoring joy this morning into your life. The devil has tried to keep you down. But listen, God is bringing you out today. Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory to God, I feel this in me like I've never felt it before. Hallelujah. New chapter, new chapter, new season. Lift your hands right now. Lift your voice right now. It's a new chapter. It's a new season. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting your joy back right now. Somebody's getting peace back right now. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody's getting the anointing back right now. God's doing something in somebody's finances right now. It's a new season. Glory to God. Somebody's children are going to come back to Jesus. It's a new chapter. It's a new season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Somebody's going to start dreaming again. The devil stole your dreams. The ambitions that you had. Listen. God today is restoring that in you. In your belly today. The hardships of life have taken that and robbed that from you. That's what the devil wants to do. The Bible says he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life everlasting. He's come today for a new chapter. It's a new season. 
with every head bowed and every eye closed. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, there may be somebody here today that doesn't know you. Their new chapter begins with salvation. Today, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today, because of all of the bad chapter chapters that you've had, maybe you've walked away from Jesus and strayed away from him. Today is your new chapter. It begins with you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today, your new chapter begins with you repenting to God and saying, God, forgive me. God, change my life. Oh, God, do it right now. Maybe your new chapter needs to begin with healing. And God says your new chapter right now, by my stripes, you will be made whole. By my stripes, you are healed. Today, that might be you. Today, you may have gone through some hurt. You may have been through some pain in your life. But God says to you today, I have come to give you joy. I have come to restore peace into your life and into your family. I have come to give you victory. Today, the new chapter begins in this church, in this body. Devil, you can't have this people. Devil, you can't have this church. Thank you, Father, that our story does not end with a bad chapter. But God, a new chapter begins this day. Hallelujah. I wonder if God has spoken to you today. If he has, this altar is open while Aaron sings. Give us something, Aaron. And, and I pray while we worship the Lord this morning, you will come and let him do an incredible work in your life today. Who wants to come? Who needs a new chapter to dawn right now? This is your time. This is your time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Breathe on me. Jesus. Breathe on me. Come on. Holy Ghost power. Come on in the back. Breathe on me. It's a new chapter. Yesterday's gone. Don't you dare stay in the bad chapter. You have a choice to make today. I'm not staying in the bad chapter. I'm walking boldly into the new. Come on, all the way in the back. This is for you today. Hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a new chapter. Hallelujah. Bless his name. chapter, a new chapter, a new chapter, don't stay in the old, don't stay in the bad. Listen, I 
felt like the Holy Spirit just say there's somebody here today and because of hurts because people have hurt you it's caused you to almost question every person that comes into your life and says anything somebody says hi and you question well I wonder what that means somebody says I love you and you think in your mind they don't love me nobody can love me Listen, that's a lie of the devil today. He's trying to keep you in the bad chapter. But listen, God says today, if you will allow me, I will pour out my spirit on you, and I will take away that hurt, and I will renew you, and a new chapter will start this day. So if that's you this morning, while he continues to sing, I want you to come and allow the Holy Spirit to deliver you today from that hurt. into 2020. 
2020 into a new decade. It's a new season. It's a new chapter. All things become new. Listen, hallelujah. This is it. We're pressing on to the mark today. Forgetting those things which are behind. It's a choice. It's a choice. We're choosing to forget the things in the bad chapter. And we're pressing forward in the new. Hallelujah. God, I pray that you'll bless this congregation as we walk into, Lord, 2020. God, I pray a fresh anointing. May your Shekinah glory just rule supremely among us. And God, I thank you today for the new chapter, the new page that you've turned us to. And I pray, God, in this new season, it will be a season of anointing. It will be a season of souls being saved. It's a new chapter of miracles, signs, and wonders. Glory to God. It's a new season, a new chapter of unity. It's a new chapter of godly fear and holiness. It's a new chapter of financial blessings. I thank you, Father, that you've turned the page. Glory to God. Now walk with us, Lord, I pray, in the name that's above every name. Let me just tell you, as we're going into this week, we'll continue with the prayer times on Tuesdays and Fridays from noon to one. If you're off this Tuesday and you can come here to the church between 12 and one to pray, I invite you to come. Let's fill this house. Let this be a house of prayer this week on New Year's Eve day that we will march into the new year a praying people.